Good evening. Thank you everyone for joining us on our talk series, Connecting the Dots. So let's explain why White Dot uh, came into being. As a consumer, um, I was having a lot of trouble finding foods that were clean or causing less inflammation or understanding the labels or you know, even understanding what some of the ingredients on the label meant. And it was very frustrating for me. And uh, I was wondering just like how White Dot, uh, you know, just like how we have red dot for veg uh, non-vegetarian food and green dot for vegetarian food um why is there no clear marking for clean food and uh based on that and my frustration we decided to launch white dot a clear indication for clean foods so um many of us see a lot of advertisements and reels and you know fads about what the diets are the trends that are going on what we should should need we don't understand half of them but we still try them um, and, you know, uh, I think that a lot of us are confused at times. Is it good for us? Is it not good for us? And it can be hard to identify that. And why should that be the case? So uh, we came up with a few um, items that help us identify clean foods. And uh, here's what clean food means. It's a list of short ingredients, no added preservatives, no GMOs, no refined sugar, uh, healthy fats less processed, and of course, whole grain foods, which are really good for your gut. So to help build this awareness and answer so many questions on food and how it impacts our body, we have a special guest here with us today. He is a highly esteemed gastroenterologist and liver specialist in Hyderabad, known for his extensive clinical experience and expertise. He pursued an MD in, international me in internal medicine he pursued an MD in internal medicine and also served as a guest lecturer at Seth GSMC and Chem Hospital, Mumbai, further specializing with a DM in gastroenterology and hepatology. He has worked at Max Hospitals, Saket in New Delhi and King's College Hospital in London as a visiting fellow in liver transplantation. He has a very diverse set of skills. So his uh, vast expertise are management in various gastrointestinal disorders, including liver disorders, inflammatory bowel disorders, uh, luminae GI disorders, which is irritable bowel syndrome that we understand. He also has actively participated in several liver transplantations and post-operative care. So let me uh, introduce you to the wonderful Dr. Uh, Dheeraj Agarwal. And he's going to help us dissect the gut and the liver health. Should we be having prebiotics, not having them? He's going to let us know all about it. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, the conversation with Dr. Dheeraj Agarwal at White Dot. And we're going to be talking about a little bit on the gut, the liver, and uh, get into a lot of uh, the myths that people talk about, the cleanse. You know, all the buzzwords now that we have are about prebiotics, gut cleanse, probiotics, and all of that. So shall we dive into the gut to get a better understanding? Yes, we must. All right. So um, I have a few questions for you. First of all, why is the gut health so important? It's considered the second brain, but why? All right, Prerna, thank you for that amazing question. And let me introduce myself. I'm Dr. Dheeraj Agarwal. I'm a gastroenterologist. I'm working in Hyderabad at uh, Continental Hospitals. And coming directly to your question, why gut health is so important? Practically speaking, gut is everything today. And it is not uh, any recent phenomenon. 5,000 years ago, our Ayurveda has said, gut is the root for all the problems. This mm -hmm. belief okay. in the gut is there for a long time in our Ayurveda. And now uh, it's only the now that the Western or the allopathy is recognizing the importance of gut in the health. So you would be knowing uh, probably- Just one second, Dheeraj. Uh, we can't hear you on Instagram. Are you on mute on Instagram? Uh, let me just check. I have probably made it almost zero. I, no, now, not I the volume that you can hear, but what people can hear you. Are you- uh... Just let me try again. Sure. Yeah. Now, are you able to hear me? I've no. added you as a moderator. Can you see that? No. I think now we can. No. No. Are you able to hear me? No. <laughs> 
One second. Yeah, yeah, probably now. Probably All right, now. now we can, yes. Okay, so I'm also going to... Let me flip my audio. Uh, yeah. So now you need to reduce your volume completely down. Am I better now? Uh, yeah, but you're echoing, so you have to reduce the... One second, hang on. All right, I've done that. Very good. Thank you so much. Okay. All but right. it's so kind of you. Right. Cool. So we're ready to get started. And let's talk about what. Uh, why is the gut important? Gut is everything to us. And this is this concept is there uh, for a long time with us in the form of Ayurveda, where it has been told that the gut is root cause for everything. You name it. There's a brain disorders, psychological disorders, heart problems, mm -hmm. liver problems. Anything, obesity, autoimmune conditions, inflammation, anything, everything. you name it, everything. And why is that? And as you ask why the gut is called as a second brain, you know, mm -hmm. how many are uh, neurons in the brain? How many? Any idea? Enlighten us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then the gut, the gut is, uh, we start from the mouth till our the digestion, till our the excretion part. And it mm -hmm. has almost 40 trillions of bacteria. It has more number of bacteria than our body has cells. Wow. So that's the, that is the quantum of the uh, this gut microbiome. And this gut microbiome can modulate everything that we eat, that we can produce, and the way the bo our body can work. Right. Nice. And um, why does having a bad gut health, what does it do to the overall body? Like, you know, if you've got uh, any kind of uh, minor symptoms like bloating, the most common symptom, right? Uh, what does it do to the body? Why is gut health that important? All right. So, uh, Kurt, uh, so uh, before uh, mentioning on this question, let me educate uh, everyone who is listening us. Like, what, what do you mean by gut? The gut starts right from your oral cavity, which includes your teeth, the saliva that you produce from the throat till the food pipe, then the stomach, then the gallbladder and the liver, then the intestine, which are namely of two types, the small intestine and the large intestine, and the rectum and the inner area. Besides that, there is a pancreas, spleen, and these organs which also comes under the uh, comes under the category of the gut. So gut is just not your tummy. It starts from the right from the mouth up to mm -hmm. your rectum, right? Right. So how so, I explain it to my three-year-old basically is that, you know, she keeps asking how how is digestion. So I explain to her that the food goes in the mouth, it goes down through the esophagus into the stomach, and then it goes round, 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 and then it goes into the intestine. And then the big bag that is the intestine is full, and then you poop and then it goes flat. <laughs> is that relevant? Way, what a wonderful way of explaining it. I, I should. I think it would be something that people understand more easily, right? Yeah. I should be using your way of description to educate my people next time. Dheeraj, <laughs> you're also muted on uh, Insta. You might want to unmute yourself on Insta. All right. Don't increase the volume, just the button. Unmute it. Yeah, I just did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. OK, we're good now. So um, also. How does the gut become unhealthy? So uh, the, there is various way uh, the, the gut can become healthy. There are some reasons which we inflict upon ourselves and some things which we carry uh, the risk of making it unhealthy through the genetic factors. And so there are genetic factors on which you don't have any control. Mm -hmm. And there are some acquired factors where you inflict yourself into an unhealthy condition. Just to name a few, eating a lot of processed food, unhealthy food, eating not so clean food in a way, or eating a lot of refined food, that is one category. The second mm -hmm. one, uh, like uh, taking a lot of alcohol, smoking, stress, taking a lot of antibiotics, eating a lot of uh, outside food, which is not so healthy, mm -hmm. eating a lot of spicy, and all this thing, to name a few. Right. So that's how we inflict all the bad onto us. Yes. Right. And okay. that's the and most common way. That's the most common way. 90% of things are we inflict upon ourselves. Right. So what does clean food mean to you? So 
clean food is something uh, which is not so processed, which is not artificial, which is organic, which has simple ingredients. That is a that is a clean food to me. Right. So basic home cooked food that we eat. Uh, home right. cooked food is a simplistic way to say it. So something which is not mm -hmm. so processed in the home. I don't think all of us process any of the food items, except right. for some pills or something which are processed. And you know how they are being processed. You add a lot of preservatives right. into it. You add a lot of salt into it. You are uh, the salt is added as a preservative, and, mm -hmm. and that's clean in a way. That's how a home food like even a pickle cannot be a clean food. Okay. But it's it's lesser processed than what you would buy at the stores, which has a lot of preservatives that you don't understand the chemically formulated preservatives, right? Absolutely. That is very well right. said. In the home, when you make a pickle, you know what are the ingredients. And they're all simple ingredients which are used in our day-to-day -day life. Right. So uh, how does processed food uh, impact your digestive system? So uh, when we say processed food, we mean that we are adding a lot of uh, chemicals to it. We are adding preservatives to it. We are altering the, the natural form of the food items. And naturally, when we do all the thing, we add, we change the nutritive value of that food. Okay, why do we eat food? We eat food so that we get a healthy diet. Uh, we get proteins, minerals, vitamins out of it, and we process right. it. You change all these values because a lot of vitamins get destroyed at a high boiling point. When we Correct. refine Correct. it, we lose a lot of minerals and the proteins out of it. That's how mm -hmm. probably. Uh, it's not uh, that's how right. the so you mean what according right and what according to you uh, you know are foods that cause inflammation in the body so um, the the inflammatory like the most are inflammative nothing. the most inflammatory food that you can think of alcohol ah. <laughs> But what's Smoke. life without a little bit of fun? <laughs> Absolutely. This is the most common thing. And I think I have, an, I have not come across a more inflammatory food or drink than the alcohol. And to uh, follow this order would be uh, this carbonated or the soft drinks or the energy right. drinks. Right. And the next food high would be in sugar. high in sugar. And then this processed food. These are the top three food items, I would say. Right. And, um, you know, is bloating in the body related to gut health? Absolutely. The bloating happens in the tummy and the tummy right. means there's a gut. So something in the gut is producing the bloating, right? So when you say bloating, it means that you feel heaviness in the stomach and the right. heaviness can be because of uh, gas or impacted. Uh, if you, the motions are not free, then you can feel the bloating. Right. And what are the foods uh, that you know you can recommend which help reduce inflammation? Like apart from medication and stuff in excessive situations, are there foods that we can uh, incorporate into our day-to-day -day life that help with the natural cleansing of the gut? Absolutely. So uh, see, uh, this particular question has many uh, aspects to it. So if you ask me how to decrease the inflammation in the gut, that can mm -hmm. be one question. If you ask me, uh, how do you decrease the bloating? Uh, what do you say? The cleansing action, right? That is a right. different question, right? So uh, the answer for these questions are different. Correct. So if you ask me, yeah. How do you decrease the bloating? Exactly. That's a very precise question that I would like to answer. Right. So uh, like bloating uh, means a different thing to different people. The mm -hmm. most important reason of bloating is constipation. Somebody who is constipated, not having a clear uh, motions, mm -hmm. the, the food items, the waste, food, the waste things will be acted upon the bacteria, and the bacteria will produce a lot of gas, and that gas can lead to the bloating. That is number one reason of bloating. Then, so uh, the second thing is that there are some food items, if uh, which are not digested well by the human body, mm -hmm. and the third uh, intolerance which are acquired. For example, lactose intolerance. Like right. it has been said that almost thirty percent of the adults will develop lactose intolerance by the adulthood. And by okay. the older age, almost 60% of people would, would, would be lactose intolerant. So, but why is that? 
So there is some enzyme which is called as lactase that is present in the small intestine of our body. Mm -hmm. And it helps in the digestion of this milk sugar, which is lactose. So, so uh, because of the, some genetic reason, this enzyme gets depleted as we become older. That okay. is how a neonate or a newborn can just survive on the milk. On mm -hmm. the other hand, by the adulthood, if you take milk and milk products, because this bacteria is not there, mm -hmm. the other bacteria which are there in the gut will act upon this milk and produce a gas. So lactose intolerance is not something that we have from childhood. It's something that develops over a period of age. Yeah, so the lactose intolerance can be of two types. The first one is a primary lactose intolerance, where the, genetically the child doesn't have that enzyme to digest milk, the lactose mm -hmm. enzyme that is deficient genetically. That is a okay. primary lactose intolerance. Okay. But that is seen very less commonly. The most, com the most common one is the secondary lactose intolerance, where this enzyme, the body starts, stops producing this enzyme as you grow older. Okay. Right. And, um, you know, can you give us one or two case studies of clients who've had gut health that has improved because of a change in diet, who've come to you with severe gastro, uh, gastric issues or indigestion issues, uh, and it, it's helped them by just altering minor things in their diet? Prerna, uh, you asked very less examples to me, only two. <laughs> Practically, if you ask me, my 70% of practice is just based upon altering the diet and changing your gut and gut symptoms right. so but that's the most difficult part right getting someone to change their diet is the toughest uh, job of all so uh, to uh, tell you a few examples i won't say two uh, let me tell you four or five examples to you okay sure go ahead let me, let me go ahead with the first example the first example is gerd that is a gastroesophageal reflux disease all of mm -hmm. us know this is acid reflux issue in our body right right all of us, namely, whether I'm doctor or not, every each of one get the acid reflux in our mm -hmm. life. And I can just alter this condition by changing my diet. It has been said that if you eat a lot of spicy food, if you eat a lot of oily food, if you eat a lot of chocolates, dark chocolate. Uh, um... Acid and more. We seem to have a little bit of a glitch, I think. I think your uh, the Google Meet seems to be frozen. No, no. Okay, no, we are perfect. Yes, <laughs> perfect. We got it back. Yeah. All right. Yes. So, so acid reflux, the acid reflux, uh, namely if we can stop the spice, a lot of oily food, dark chocolate, smoking, mm -hmm. drinking alcohol, and uh, tea and coffee, if we reduce all this thing, this acid reflux issue can be decreased by almost 70%. Now let's all talk Indian. about our most favorite thing, the Indian chai. You know, there's two uh, versions of it. One people say, no, it does not cause you acidity. The other people say that, you know, it's the primary cause of acidity. And it's something that is loved by everyone all over India. So how do you, uh, you know, what is your take on that? Which is that item? I didn't get it. Like Indian chai. Indian chai. Oh wow! Right. Chai. So, what yes. Indian chai? Chai. <laughs> chai. Yes. Chai. You it's see? like saying chai latte. Chai tea. Sorry, chai tea. No, no, not yeah. chai tea. Just chai. chai. Tea? Yeah. So chai tea is uh, as such good. A little bit of intake by most of the Indians uh, doesn't lead to any damage. But then, mm -hmm. notably, it causes two things. The first thing is that the chai has tannins. Tannin. Mm -hmm. Tannin is a chemical which go and chillate your proteins. So if you mm -hmm. eat your food and if you if you take tea afterwards, the tannin in the tea can chillate the protein in your diet and which can lead to impaired absorption of some nutrients and proteins. There is a number one effect. Okay. And the second thing is the, the chai uh, can lead to more acid production in the stomach and it mm -hmm. can increase the problem of acid reflux and free of tannin. Right, so hence so the acidity good. issue with chai related. Got it. Yes. Oh, this is so, some gold here. I don't think we've had this proper breakdown of why chai is bad. You know, everyone talks about it, but no one really has that uh, medical information shared out yet. So this is great. Right. So going back to the case study, we just finished the uh, this acid reflux issue. Let's go to mm -hmm. the bloating issue. Now, Correct. the second case study is about the bloating. A lot of people right. uh, come to me with bloating, and I ask them, are you taking milk? 
they say yes, and they notice uh, this bloating after milk. I just stop their milk and milk products, and I allow them to take some uh, yogurt and curd, and mm -hmm. the bloating is gone. The simple case study. Okay. Right. The third one is the high food map diet. You can note this word down: F O D M A P. That is food map. Okay. Okay. This food map are the is a category of food items which produces more gas in your stomach. Mm -hmm. So high food map diet means they produce more uh, gas in your stomach, and low food map diet means they produce less less gas in your stomach. Right. All right? So a lot of people who say bloating to me, and I ask them, are you taking a high food map diet? Mm -hmm. So what do you mean by high food map diet? High food map diet includes food items like, like the beans and all. Okay. It also includes okay. products like uh, all this garlic, onion, milk, right. beans, pulses, eggs, and all this thing. High protein diet, which produces right. more gas in your stomach. But then so, isn't protein really important for your body as well? Absolutely. Our muscles and everything are nothing but the proteins. So how do you balance the two out? So see, not everyone uh, would be uh, intolerant to the protein. Okay. Got it. Only few of them who notice a lot of bloating, including I meet several people in the gym, and they say mm -hmm. we are getting bloating. I say the answer lies with you. You're taking proteins every now and then from morning till evening. And right. then you produce yeah. more gas, and then you fart, and there's like <laughs> the protein over the over protein problems. Yes, <laughs> right. Because okay. see, uh, our body has got a threshold. Mm -hmm. uh, we can digest things up to a certain threshold. When the threshold exceeds, we end up having more bloating and gas. Right. Got it. And so okay, that's interesting. Um, and just to complete this with a third case study. Sure. And a uh, few of my patients have constipation. And uh, there, there's a lot of things which uh, one can do to improve constipation. Mm -hmm. But to yeah. note, I can just tell you a few things. Have a lot of water, take high fiber diet, and start having caffeine in your in your life. Black, tea, black coffee. Black coffee. Black coffee. And the black coffee works like a magic. It increases your colonic transit. What I mean means by that is that it Im improves your peristalsis and the speed with, with which the intestine moves. And let's that's just talk in simple terms. It gives you pressure. <laughs> it gives you pressure. It gives, right. it presses that button to, for the <laughs> to flow. Eject button, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Okay, so caffeine. So simply taking black coffee uh, in your diet can reduce the inflammation in the cut. And it can mm -hmm. in, in, it can create the pressure for poop. Right. That that yeah. that uh, is helpful. Can you also explain to us, um, you know, with prebiotic and probiotic, what are the differences, and do we really need to be having prebiotic powders in our food or or drinks? Does that help really? Yeah. See, uh, now the entire health and disease revolves around the gut microbiome. Okay. okay, and there is way there are various ways in which this gut microbiome can get altered. Right. Namely, if you take a lot of antibiotics, it will not only kill the bad bacteria, but it will also kill all the good bacteria that you have in your body. Mm -hmm. That is the way your gut microbiome can get changed. Okay. Secondly, if we eat outside food and all this thing, we get some small infection, food poisoning. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? The good bacteria are replaced by bad bacteria, and you know, right. You, all of us has got through this food poisoning thing. And what happens? Instantly, we have to rush to the washroom. We get liquid stools, water stool, almost 10 to 15 times in a day. We get mm -hmm. stomach cramps and all this thing. This is the effect of bad bacteria. Right. So, and that vice versa tell us what is the effect of good bacteria, how important it is to have good bacteria. So, how do we improve these good bacteria? That is how the theory of this prebiotic and probiotic has come. Probiotic means there are ready-made good bacteria which are compiled in a small pill, and that contains several thousands of them, which you can take just to enhance your good bacteria. Okay. And what do you mean a prebiotic? The prebiotic means they are the um, they are the 
they are the uh, item on which your gut bacteria can act and produce a desirable effect. Those are okay. the prebiotics. So both are important. Both are important. Either you provide the raw material to your intestine so that your body makes it, mm -hmm. or you give the ready-made bacteria to the body that are the probiotics. What is that raw material? Fiber? Fibers. Uh, there are many of them. There are short-chain fatty acids. There okay. are fibers. Uh, yeah, that's all I can remember right now. Well, that's uh, really good information. So uh, let's make this a little bit more fun. We're, you know, the generation of Google. We Google every problem that we have. Why am I farting so much? Why am I burping so much? Why am I get not losing weight? So we've Googled a few, uh, you know, digestive and gut uh, health issues. And I'm going to ask you some of these questions. All you have to do is say true or false. Oh, very good. Okay? I'm, I'm into it. All right. Okay, let's do this. Uh, drinking hot water with food aids digestion. False. Okay. Chewing gum sits in the stomach for, for years. It doesn't get digested. Chewing gum. Chewing, chewing gum? Yeah. True. Okay. Food can soak up alcohol after a night. Wrong. False. <laughs> false. <laughs> Lying down after eating is better for digestion. Absolutely false. Burping is a sign of digestion. Partially right. Okay. Chewing food 20 times helps your digestion. True. Okay. Uh, cooked food is easier to digest. Partially true. Drinking plenty of water with meals is good. Partially true. Always go to bed on an empty stomach to lose weight. Wrong. Eating spicy food causes stomach ulcers. Partially right. Drinking chilled milk re uh, relieves acidity or stomach ulcers. Partially right. You have invented a new category of partially right. <laughs> Only <laughs> alcoholics. This is the disadvantage of speaking to a doctor because <laughs> as a doctor and a DM uh, gastro, you know so much more that you can right. make new categories out of it. Yeah, true. Only alcoholics get liver cirrhosis. Alcoholics definitely get cirrhotics, but there are other causes for cirrhosis. It's true. Beans are very gassy. True. You cannot consume dairy products if you are lactose intolerant. Partially true. In diarrhea, you should avoid fiber. Uh, partially true. If your stomach gurgles, it always means you're hungry. Wrong. If you must, de you must detox to clear your digestive system. Wrong. Excellent. So we have all the questions answered over here. And that's all the time that we have today. If anyone would like to get in touch with Dr. Deeraj or go to him for a consultation for any liver, gut, uh, you know, uh, related issues, then please do get in touch with him. He's at uh, Continental Hospitals in Hyderabad. And the details will be posted on our social media pages as well. That's white.basket on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. If you've missed some part of the talk and would like to share it with family and friends, we would be uh, uploading all of our videos onto our YouTube page, white.basket. And we will be having a lot more talks coming up with esteemed nutritionists and pediatricians who will help us understand what clean food is. So please do stay connected. and. Um, you know, we look forward to talking to you more. Thank you, Dr. Deeraj. It was a lovely conversation with you. Very Thank insightful. You. Thank you, Ms. Prerna. It was amazing speaking to you and your audience. And this Thank is you. such an interesting topic. And I really keep, keep on speaking and speaking on it. And I'm hoping to get connected with you one more time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I'm Prerna Mocha, co-founder of White Dot, in conversation with Dr. Deeraj, helping you find the easy way to choose clean. Thank you. Thank you so much. See you again. Bye, Bye. for now.